Hi there, I'm Sandy Olnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I'm going to be coloring some glass jars with my Copic markers. And I'm probably going to need a whole playlist just for Copic coloring jars. I can't seem to stop. And this Flora and Fauna set has a very cool antique looking jar and some fun ocean themed things to put in it. So I'm going to stamp a whole row of jars because one jar is not enough. When there's one, there could be two, there could be three, so why not? So I'm using my Misty to stamp a whole row of them and get them lined up. So I'm going to leave the stamp where it is and move the paper. Often we try to move the stamp, but when we have a Misty, we can just slide it down, sort of hover over where we think we want to have it stamp at, put the magnets back down, ink our stamp back up, and then stamp again. And I'm using some Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, which works for both watercolor and for Copic. So if you are interested in having one black ink that works for both, that's a good thing to get. I was very excited when I learned that that worked for both of them. And I'm using some Mina cardstock since I'm gonna be coloring with my Copics. So if you wanna do stuff with Copic markers, you need Copic friendly supplies, paper and ink same with watercolor. So I stamped a couple of the little objects inside the glass jars and now it's time to color. And I'm first going to color the glass itself and I'm starting with a very light B color and you can do it with a darker color but most people freak out about dark colors so we're going to start with a light one and I'm just coloring in from the edge. I'm going to leave a white edge around the absolute outside and then fill in some spaces. I'm not really, there's no science to this, and every single one of these jars will be different. But I'm gonna pick a few spots now to go in with a darker blue, and I'm using a B41 because it's a little bit on the duller side because it has a four, which means it's gonna be less saturated. So it'll be a very different feeling blue, but it's a one, which means it's very light. And I'm just gonna color in some random I don't know, I, I wish I could teach you how to color glass in a way that makes some logical sense. On a few of these I'm going to put in a window reflection, but honestly the window reflection should be in the same place on every single jar, or at least it should be. It should look like the window is all in the same place and I kind of just randomly placed it all over the place because for most people, if they see something that looks glassine, they're going to fill in the blanks themselves. And really on glass, it's a matter of leaving some highlights and then having some darker areas. That's a really simple process to think through. And for each one of these glass jars, I'm putting a different amount of liquid in there. So that's a fun way to indicate that some are more full than others. You can have a wavy top on the very top edge. You can have a flat top. I guess it would pretty much be flat because they're not moving around in there. I'm assuming these little jars are preserved critters, <laughs> I don't know. I, I hate to think of them as dead objects in there, but more like they're just... I don't know how they got them in there, as a matter of fact, while I'm thinking about it. I guess it's the whole conundrum of how you got a ship inside of a jar. I don't know how they do that. Maybe they build the jar around the ship or something, but they would have to do the same thing with all of these, and I don't know how the whale is the same size as the mermaid but you know these are stamps so we can do whatever we want right so i'm just adding a darker blue to each one and i'm not going really dark so be careful in how dark you go with it unless there's something dark behind it then you wouldn't see any dark if there is like put some glass jars out in front of various things see what you see through them and you'll notice that unless it's against a white background like these are you're going to see things through the back for right now, I'm coloring around the objects, and I'll show you at the end how I'm going to handle the coloring of the objects themselves. Because once you convince people, convince their mind that they're seeing glass, then everything else will start to work. So people are going to glom onto one section or another on this that they're going to think is glass, and it makes everything else believable. So you just need to rock one or two of them and the rest can sort of be just okay. They don't all have to be super perfect. So I decided I wanted to have some blue highlight on the top of my whale. So I colored a little bit of a bright blue on the very top and then filled in from the bottom with the gray and then used the blue to blend it in. And I thought since that looked really good on that one, I would do that on all of mine. So I'm using 
a blue for the highlight color on the very top so you get the feeling that there's water over top of them and then blue uh, the blue fades into whatever the main color on the object is so it's going to flow into a green here and that way I don't have to do a whole lot of massive coloring and worry about light sources and all that sort of thing so I'm just going to throw some color into these and not stress out about it too much because putting the work into the glass is where you want to put your time and effort. Now here's where the trick comes in. You want the glass to look like it's in front of the objects that are inside. So you need to take a really juicy colorless blender. This one I almost overfilled. I mean just really fill it because you really want some of those streaks to go right over top of the image and that's going to make it look like it's inside the glass. Look how that works just perfectly by just lightening those areas and going right over top. Now if you were to do that and also mask out a few areas when you were doing your stamping, it would look even better because you normally wouldn't see that black line through it. That black line would go gray. You could take a white pencil and cover over some of that. I am going to do a little bit of white pen work at the end here, but for now my hand is going to be in front of the camera, I guess. Uh, while I put a little bit on top of the seahorse over here. And I'm trying to make him look like he's inside by just taking a few of the streaks and go right over top. But, but you see the shape that that, that gloopy, juicy marker, that, that juicy zero marker, really gives it that glassine look because it's kind of a bloopy shape. And that's really what, what glass looks like. It's not always like really crisp, beautiful, perfect shapes. So on the bottom, I just added some brown color, and I'm going to use a Copic Multiliner to draw some wood. And when you're drawing wood, just make some wood grain in it. It's not anything you have to do, do fancy drawing for. Just color over it with different lines and make some knots in it and stuff. If you don't like what you colored, then make the brown darker, and then no one will really see the lines that you did. Now here's where I'm taking my white pen, and I'm just going to pick a few areas over top of the image and carry that white line across the image so it breaks that black line. And it's just going to be enough, just a small amount on each one makes it believable. And that's really what you're going for when you're coloring something like this. Just make it believable enough and people will buy it. Their, their mind will fill in the blanks when they're trying to figure out what is what the picture is. And once you've convinced them in just a few areas, they're going to believe it in all the others. I hope this was helpful to you. Go color some glass jars. There's lots of fun things you can put in them. You can click on my face to subscribe to my channel. Go take a Copic class. Watch some more videos, whatever you'd like. And I will see you back here in a few days with another video. Thanks so much for stopping by. Bye-bye.